now This MMA, what we talking about? Yeah, you tuned into the pod now Gonna be hard for you to stop now Yeah, we caged in Caged in. Welcome back to another episode of Caged In. I'm your host, Chris Carlo. Today, we got a very special guest making his debut on the show. It is Shamik Harvey. How are we doing today, my man? Doing good. What about yourself, brother? I'm doing great, man. I can't complain. I know you got a big fight coming up in a couple weeks, man. Fight four at 22. You're going in there versus David Wilson for the flyweight championship. Of course, we're here to talk about that one, man. But since you are new to the show, I'd like to get into your background a little bit, and then we'll get into the fight stuff. That sound good? No problem, bro. Cool, man. Just off the top, man, where were you born and raised and what was growing up kind of like for you? Uh, I was born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, really don't have any combat sports background, played football. But other than that, I just regular fan, seen it on TV, walked into the gym and just never looked back from there. Now we fight about to fight for a title in a couple of weeks. There you go, man. It's exciting stuff right there. Um, you touched on like your introduction to MMA a little bit, but do you remember kind of like when the sport caught your eye and what made you want to get into the gym for the first time? Just give me like the the intro to your uh, journey into MMA. Yeah, it was uh, those Anderson Silva days, like those early Anderson Silva days. Like I remember seeing him knock people out. And at the time, like, you know, MMA was fairly new. So I just never even seen anybody get kicked in the face before. So I remember I seen him, uh, I think I seen him kick uh, Vitor Belfort. I was like, whoa, like he using his feet. Like, right. you know I mean? It kind of like got me into it. And then like uh, John Jones, seeing John Jones, it's just like all the, I got into it kind of late. Like I wasn't a fan of the Ultimate Fighter and stuff. I was like, I was late into when like John Jones was going, him in DC. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I just like, was like, uh google mma gyms near me luckily it was an M- mma gym literally five minutes from my dad house literally just went in there one day and then signed in it was a big eye opener in the first day because i realized like oh snap like this is much different than the tv so it was it was a cool experience right man and i know you are eight and two as a pro so you've had plenty of pro fights under your belt people have seen you fight before you fought on a big stage for fury but for those that haven't seen you fight man how would you describe your fight style to them uh fight style just pace pressure uh speed uh very exciting big slams like also i can adapt to any style been in big fights uh fought all over like if you see my resume, you're going to see it's not just in Charlotte. I go to uh, anybody hometown. I go wreck them boys, too. So, rounded. I think I'm uh, well-rounded as well. I think you see me do a little bit of everything. I do gravitate towards the grappling side, but the striking has come along as well, though. Love that, man. Love that. Let's get into your training camp a little bit. I know you are over at Carolina Combat. Um, for those that aren't familiar with the gym, man, what's the vibe like and what's the culture like that you guys are building over there? Uh, over at CCS, yeah. Uh, really, uh, just a bunch of dogs, just a bunch of hungry dogs. Like, it's no secret. Everybody know what our teammate Brian uh, been doing in the UFC. So, he, he's got – he's really opened a door for us for that. But at the end of the day, like, it's time for us to make our own path, make our own name. So, right now, uh, we got Jonathan Martin. We got jo- Josh Motzinger. We got all those boys for us pros. Uh, Josh has a big fight coming up on Fury. And then John has a big fight coming up on, in uh, Fayetteville. So, just a bunch of dogs, a uh, bunch of it's family, it's uh, family oriented. Like those boys, like my brothers, uh, but we 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 gotta prove it though. Like it, we can't just keep uh, living off the hype of our teammate Brian. We gotta uh, prove our own path, and so that's what I'm looking to do right now. Be the next one from CCS that's in the UFC or any major organization. For sure, man, 100%. And, you know, you mentioned him, your teammate, UFC welterweight, Brian Battle. I've also yeah. seen you in his corner a few times for some of his fights, man. Uh, well, what's it been like, you know, you know, seeing his rise in the UFC, and what have you learned most about what it takes to get to that next level and maybe seeing some of the, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff that go on uh, when you get to that next level into the UFC? Uh, he actually kind of made me realize. 
him being in UFC made me realize it's nothing different than what we're doing. Like, it's just the production is bigger, the cameras are bigger, but at the end of the day, it's a fight, just like you fight in the local shows when we was in uh, Shepherdsville, Kentucky, when me and Brian was in Shepherdsville, Kentucky fighting. So it's the same thing. Uh, also, he just is the first one to do it. So, like, when y'all all coming up and nobody's in the UFC yet and then somebody actually does it, then it's like, okay, it can be done. Not only did he do it, he's having success at it too. So that's a difference. Uh, my, my manager, Jason House, says one thing getting in the UFC and it's another thing staying in the UFC. So that's why I'm preparing to do it. So my approach to training is uh, totally different. Like me and Brian, we training crazy amount of times a day. We with each other all day. So it's been fun. Uh kind of piggybacking off him seeing how he approaches his training and hopefully that plays dividends in my fights uh also just being with him at that ufc level and seeing all the people you're seeing on tv you realize man everybody human we all trying to get it so i'm at the point right now just i know i'm ready now like before i believed it and i kind of was like man i think i'm ready i think i'm ready but now it's like bro i know i'm ready for the next level for sure there you go, man. Let's get into your MMA career a little bit. You are eight and two. Um, your last three fights were for Fury FC, which is one of the biggest regional promotions in the country. Um, your Fury FC debut, you won via rear naked choke in round three over Joe Mar Pock. Talk to me about that performance, man. How did it feel to get your hand raised, you know, on a big stage like that? Uh, fight against Joe Mar was actually pretty funny because it was relatively, I think it was three to four weeks notice. So it wasn't even, uh, like a full fight camp also i was like coming off like the first knee like uh i had a knee injury and that was like mm -hmm. the first time i've ever been injured i actually had to pull out a fight i never pulled out a fight so it was all new territory on top of uh going to fury this big uh promotion traveling it's in texas against joe mar who was i think five and one or six and two or something so he had a very good record it wasn't that much film out on him so it was good then also because it was short notice my head coach wasn't available to coach so it was literally just me brian and my teammate taco so that was the first time i really did have my head coach so it was a bunch of, of, of adjustments so that win was like that's when i knew like well i'm ready for this next level like i just did this without the head coach brian in my corner a uh, couple things i could have done better but i got out there with a rear naked choke on one of the biggest uh promotions like feeder leagues uh for the ufc so it was a good win and i think that uh win is going to age well for sure man and then your next fight after that was at fury fc 87 where you challenged paris moran for the title unfortunately yeah. you know you had some weight issues there and you end up losing that fight by decision uh what were your biggest takeaways from that experience there and that fight and then what adjustments have you made since uh biggest takeaway we learned uh get there a day early for the for the uh before like weigh-ins uh actually two days get there two days early uh we got stuck in the airport long time uh mm. but i still always tell people like that is no excuse why i lost that fight he beat me fair and square uh i was more than prepared for that fight and i think with all that being said with all the travel issues and you still if you watch that fight and you see that performance that's how in shape i was that's how much i prepared for that moment that's how much i visualized that's how much my coaches had me ready that's how much my teammates uh held me accountable i was ready for a fight he was the better man that night he uh won a close decision but hey listen he he know what it is uh fury know what it is uh everybody in texas know what it is i went in his hometown and i challenged him for the belt i didn't get it done but came back and then got it got it done the next time and then we about to fight for a belt again in a couple of weeks so it's all good yes yeah, sir let's talk Yes, yeah, sir. Let's talk about that last fight, man. That that one at Fury FC 92, where you got the, the unanimous decision win over Jacob Silva. You know, the top control time was huge for you, paid dividends for the entire fight for you, man. Um, what was the game plan for you going in versus Silva? And then ultimately, how'd you feel about your performance that night? Yeah, Silva is an interesting character because you look at his record. He like, I think he was like 11 and nine, maybe a uh, bunch of fights. And then he was on the uh, contender series twice. So veteran, like, his first fight was like when I was like in like high school, like you feel me? Like, so right. yeah, 
he 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 was uh kind of crafty. He was a he was a crafty veteran, so those guys are always dangerous as well. Uh, as far as game plan, we expect him to be a little bit more wild. Like if you uh, watch his uh, film, you know Jacob Silva was really wild. He didn't come in and do that. He was more technical. That kind of threw me uh, for a loop uh, a little bit. But uh, like you said, wrestling uh, had good top control, and like in that first round. I got to his back and I got to that position where I finished Joe Mar at uh, that rear naked, uh, uh, rear naked choke position. Didn't get it done, but overall, I think it was a dominant performance. And again, it's at Fury in Texas, in his hometown where he's from, Texas. And I'm going in hostile territory back to back to back. That's three fights right there, fighting people from Texas. Like, you don't really see too many people uh, doing that at this stage of their career, putting their record on the line like that. For sure, man. Let's get into the reason why we are here, man. It is fight for it. 22. You're going in versus David Wilson, who is five and two as a pro. You guys will be fighting for the FFI flyweight championship. This one goes down September 14th in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Ultimately, man, what do you know about David Wilson, man? And then how do you feel about him as an opponent? Yeah, I don't like nothing about him. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like nothing about him. I, I don't have nothing good to say about him. I don't like nothing about him. Uh, I'm going to watch him on a couple weeks. Uh, yeah, I've been training extra hard for this fight. Uh, I've trained hard for all my fights, but definitely these title fights. Uh, you can expect uh, you can expect that same type of energy I uh, brought with Paris. Like, I'm going to be in his face. I'm going to be letting these combos fly. Uh, I'm bigger, faster, stronger right now. And it's just like this, and it's in my hometown as well. You feel me? It's been a, it's been a whole year since I fought at home. So that's a major advantage as well. So I'm just looking forward to putting on another uh, brilliant performance and making it to nine and two and show why I deserve to uh, get a short notice opportunity uh, for the UFC for real. For, there you go, man. There you go. Stylistically, when you break this thing down, skill versus skill, where do you see yourself having the biggest advantages when it comes to your skill set versus his? Uh, everywhere. Uh, I don't feel like it's a place in that, inside that cage where he's better than me at. Uh, like I said, I'm bigger, faster, stronger. Uh, Jiu-jitsu's way better. Wrestling's way better. Striking's way better. Combination's way better. Head movement's better. Uh, footwork's definitely better. Uh, I just don't feel like what I don't know what he's really going to do to me, but I know he's going to try to wrestle, so we're ready for that as well. So, But you, you could try that if you want to. Uh, it, it's not going to work. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, but I just know how much I've been training, how much uh, I've been studying, putting in the time outside the gym. Uh, me and my coach really dialed in with a brilliant game plan. So expect some new weapons. Expect uh, the same old Shamik Harvey for, for real. There we go, man. Very looking forward to seeing you guys go out there and scrap it out. I think the biggest discrepancy people will notice when they see the tail of the tape or when they see you guys get in there versus each other is going to be the size difference. How do you plan to use that size advantage to your advantage? Uh, I mean, if you watch my fights, you see I I, I, I use that strength. I, I'm wrestling. I'm in your face. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how the fight plays out, man. It's five rounds. Anything can happen in there. Uh, that's the good thing about my style is I'm well rounded. So it's really like where I want to go. If he want, if I want to wrestle, I can wrestle. If I want to choke you, I could choke you. If I want to strike with you, I could strike with you. We added kicks to the arsenal now, now I'm kicking. So it's like, man, wherever you want to go, especially at this point in my career right now, it's like, bro, I didn't been in Fury. I didn't fought for the Fury flyweight championship. It, I don't think, it gets any bigger than that for real. Uh, I'm fight. I fought in Texas three times back to back, man. I'm in my hometown. I'm good to be here. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm healthy. I feel big. I feel strong. Like, yeah, it's 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 just gonna be it's gonna be a bad night for David Wilson. And he he talks a lot, but we got to see if he's gonna back that up. If he backed it up, he got all my respect in the world. I just don't think that's gonna happen. There we go, man. We're going to find out on September 14th. You know, this fight is being called the champion of the Carolinas. What would it mean for you to go out there, get the win, and claim that crown? Yeah, I've been the champion of the Carolinas. He he, he the one that got to prove something. I've been the champion. Look at my record. Look at my resume. I mean, it just, I think it depends on what's your idea of a champion of the Carolinas. If you're looking for somebody that's literally fought everybody in North Carolina and outside of North Carolina, I'm the champion for sure. 
You feel me? And he's been offered this fight many times. He's just now taking it. So that's cool. We had to wait for it a little bit, but you took it at the wrong time now because I didn't got kind of my stripes with uh with uh traveling on that regional scene. I mean, if you look at my topology, you see you're gonna see Georgia, you're gonna see Kentucky, you're gonna see uh uh Texas, you're gonna see all these states where I travel to. Who was I fighting? Oh, I was fighting that hometown guy. So like now in my hometown, he's from North Carolina, but he not really making no noise from North Carolina. I mean, no, I, I know he got a name from the street beef shit, but like that ain't that ain't that ain't no MMA stuff. So as far as MMA, I feel like I'm the top dog already. He's coming to trying to take what I got. Nate. There you go, man. I know you have fought for Fight Free a few times as an amateur. You fought for them as a pro as well. How does it feel to be back in the cage fighting for them again? Uh, it feels good. I mean, I debuted for Fight For It. Uh, I love all those guys over there. Uh, also, uh, just like I was talking about my growth, uh, the growth of Fight For It as well. Like I remember... They was a smaller smaller promotion doing outside shows. Like, I didn't fought at their outside show. That was a memorable one. Um, and like I said, I debuted it. I debuted there. So, like, that's where that's where home is. And, uh, like, now it's, like, to see my amateur debut now fighting for the pro title is, like, it's crazy. And that's that was, what, 2019 I fought for the uh, debut. So, it's crazy how far I've come and how far they, uh, they done grown. So, uh, I'm excited to fight for fight for it for real. Yeah, man. Full, so full, full circle moment for sure there. Um, what can the fans in Rock Hill, South Carolina expect from Shami Carvey once those cage doors lock on September 14th? Just straight, just intentional, just, in, just being intentional in his face, just straight savage. Like, like, we got he he got to prove something for sure, especially the way he been talking. Like people don't people don't talk to me like that, and people don't call me out call me out like that. You never seen that, so we 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 gonna see we gonna see, especially in my hometown. Yo yo, we gonna see about that. So disrespect, no glove touch, disrespect, no buddy buddy. I don't play that. You feel me? Case door gonna. The case door gonna close, and then we gonna fight, and we gonna see who the best man is. And I know for sure I'm gonna be prepared for every situation that happened in that cage, and he cannot stop what's unstoppable. So we gonna see Saturday. There you go, man. And you know when you visualize this fight and you see yourself getting your hand raised, uh, do you have a prediction for this fight? Do you see a certain way that you see this fight playing out for you? I just want to abuse him for real. I just really want to abuse him. I just want to put some hurt on. Him. I want him to feel it that Sunday, for real. Uh, of course, though, I just need a finish, you feel me? Because that's what they're looking for at the next level. They're looking for finishers, and I haven't been one to finish. So that's a knock against my game. I know that. So we go, we're going to go get a finish, you feel me? We're going to do everything that's asked of us so we'll be undeniable at certain points. There you go, man. And with a win, you will be 9-2, and two, knocking on the door for some bigger opportunities. What would you like next for you, uh, you know, ideally, with a win? What do you think was, is next for you in your career? Uh, man... At this point, I don't – it's hard to – because I thought I'd be on a contender series like last year, so it's hard to – it's hard to – hard. Now I'm, right now I'm just going to worry about one win at a time and then see what Jason can pull out the bag. Uh, I like Iridium. I like Jason. I trust him. Uh, I know he'll have something big for me. I'm just waiting for my opportunity, brother. Uh, right now – Everything is about David Wilson. I'm not even focused on that. Everything is about David Wilson and finish him in emphatic fashion. There you go, man. Shamik, I appreciate you coming on the show, man, and taking the time to speak to me. Before I let you go, where can the people come find you on social media? And do you have anybody you want to shout out, anybody you want to thank? You know, this is your time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, Shamik Harvey on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I just want to uh, thank Carolina Combat, uh, my head coach, Coach Tom, I uh, want to thank Fight For It for putting on this amazing show. And I also want to thank you with Caged In Podcast for uh, having me on. It was uh, my first time on. Love it. I've been uh, seeing you interview my homies, Joe and Carlos and them boys. Trained yeah. with them times uh, before. So I knew you was a good dude and appreciate you for having me. Hey, man, I appreciate you for saying that, man. Uh, anytime you want to come back on the show, just hit me up and we'll make it happen, man. Uh, thanks for coming on again and taking the time, man. Best of luck on September 14th. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. I got down for the count and he can't even talk now. This MMA, what we talking about? Yeah, you tuned into the pod now. Gonna be hard for you to stop now. Yeah.
caged in. Yeah, we caged in. Yeah, we caged in. Yeah, we caged in.